In a previous video, I showed you the result of making a uh, cylindrical, uninterrupted background for a SketchUp animation, or you know, you could use it for a model as well if you choose. What I'll start out with here is a rectangular site, let's call it. We'll use that as the ground. Uh, one of the things I want to do with this, I want to knock corners off and soften this whole thing makes it blend better with the background. Rather than doing all that, I've just prepared here a uh, quick version of that. And this is it. So what I've done is I've taken that rectangle, I've used some arcs and created some curves here. Now one of the things you'll notice is that here around these edges, there's actually no edge here. I have to get into this group. There is an edge. Now, I don't want that. I want to eliminate that. So I'll right click on it, pick hide. I have another one over here. Right click on it, pick hide. So what that does is it softens this edge up. It gives a little more blending capability with the background. I've dumped some grass texture on this, you know, give it a little bit of uh, foreground. And that guy right there is a footprint for a build for the building. And I've done that ahead of time, only because I didn't want this to be grass. I wanted that to be different on the interior of the building. My building doesn't have a floor, so uh, obviously with the floor in your building, that wouldn't be necessary. Building's on another layer. I'll just drop that in there. You could uh, easily make another building and drop it in here someplace or do what I just did, have a layer for that. So I can turn that building off and on if I like. Now, the first thing I want to do is create a center point for the cylinder that I'm going to build around this site. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the tape measure tool and just pick these two points diagonally from each other in each direction. That gives me a center point here. I, I'm using keyboard shortcuts, so you're not going to see me reaching up and picking tools. If you don't know about keyboard shortcuts, learn that, because it makes your life a lot simpler. We'll draw a line off that point straight up on the blue axis. <coughs> and then one perpendicular to that. Now, I'm going to be going to parallel projection mode and plan. So this line will not show. That endpoint will not show in that situation. So I need to use this horizontal line as a reference. That will show. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that line and erase these guidelines. So I have my reference, I have my building, I have my site. I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to go to parallel projection. So I have a complete flat plan view. That right there is the end point, center point of the circle we're going to make. So from that end point, I'm going to build a circle, and as such. Now, I want to be able to see through that, so I'm going to put some uh, translucent material on top, and at this point I can get rid of that line. Uh, this looks a little off from where I'd like it. I'm going to move it over just a tad so it encompass the, encompasses the site a little bit better. Going back to perspective, what you're going to see is I have a circle, translucent circle, hovering above the building and the site. I'm going to push pull this down so it's below the building and I'm going to pull it up so it's significant, significantly above. Right now hidden geometry is on so you can see all these dashed lines. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. That makes a clean cylinder for us. Going back to uh, a side view here and parallel projection, 
I want to look at this whole thing, make sure it's what I think it is. Buildings floating above the bottom and well above the top. So we're good. Uh, you can always adjust this height later, but kind of good to get it right in the beginning if you can. Uh, we'll go back to perspective. At this point, I can get rid of the top and the bottom of this cylinder because I, I don't need those anymore. So what I have here, how do I get a material, a texture, a background onto that cylinder? If I take and dump something right on there, it's going to chop itself up into little pieces. So I can't do that. What I need is a canvas outside of this, which I will draw with the line tool and get it approximately the same height as the cylinder that we've got there now. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that line because I don't want it intersecting the cylinder. I look again from the parallel perspective and some head-on version. And actually, I'm not too far off. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Get it a little closer. And just scoot this down somewhere in there. So they're about the same height. Back to perspective. Now I have a canvas and I have the cylinder and they're approximately the same height. How do I get a texture onto this? How do I get my background onto that? So I have to go to File, Import, because I want to bring in a photograph. Uh, right now, I have under trees the landscape. I'll back up just a little bit. Down in this area, I have SketchUp backgrounds. You'll also notice that everything I have for SketchUp is starts with SketchUp. That keeps them all grouped together. Uh, go down to back up to backgrounds, uh, trees. So I've organized all these images that I've collected. Now you see, uh, there's nothing here. You're kind of, oh man, what's going on there? It's right now on SketchUp files. It's looking for SketchUp files. So I need to go down to all supported image types, which will bring up pings and JPEGs and TIFFs and BMPs, uh, even drawing files. We'll go to all imported image types. Put this on uh, large icon option here. You can go extra large if you like, but that takes up a lot of space. So large icons. That gives me uh, little images of the pictures. I can make this a little bigger if I want and see them a little better. So now I can make my choice. I think I'm going to go ahead and use trees and pond as the background. So I'll select that. Make sure you have used as texture clicked, checked off here. That's very important. Otherwise, the uh, image will come in as an image, and that's not uh, editable. This one would be. So we'll open that. And what that's going to do is bring this image in, and it's essentially this plane that will jump all over the place. Now I want to click on that corner and drag this out and then let go here on the other end. So what you see is you've got that image set on the plane that we've built here. I'm not too crazy about how this is on here. You get too much foreground, I think. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to right click. Go down to Texture and pick Position. Now what that does is gives me a nine square version of this, which is tiled. That's, that's what Texture really looks like. And with the little hand tool, this comes up naturally. I can move this around, get it more where I'd like. Now you can see it's in squares and we want to 
pull this down a bit. I'm also going to pick these pins and I can reshape this texture a bit. I'm going to make it a little shorter so I have a little more sky, maybe a little bit more. So essentially I'm reshaping, rewarping, re reproportioning that photograph. So now I have a little more sky that looks good to me, a little less foreground. Maybe I want to bring that up just a little bit, get a little more foreground. Okay. So I have this texture here, and I wanted to apply it to that cylinder. Right now, you know, I think I'm going to make this a little taller. So just stretching this uh, plane up, I can add more sky. I'm going to take this cylinder and move it up approximately the same amount as well. I'm trying to get these two about the same height. So I know from here to here, I know what I'm going to get. To get this on here, uh, I want to change this to a projected texture. If I don't, I'm going to get all little choppy parts. I'm sure you've seen that happen when you try to apply texture to a curve and you get funky pieces all over the place. Right click on this, again go to texture and now pick projected. And what that'll do is allow me to put this surface on this cylinder smoothly. So again, right click, texture, projected. Now in order to get this here, I'll go to the materials box, use the uh, little eyedropper sampler tool, pick it off of here, and you're going to get the paint bucket right away, and just drop it on there. Okay. Now you're going to notice there's some kind of stretched out areas because what SketchUp is trying to do is apply that texture all the way around this curve. Now I can fix this. So it's not too bad. I've got a joint here that you know probably needs a little work. And I've got this skewed thing over here as well. Now to fix that, we would go to the View, Hidden Geometry menu. And when I pick each one of these sections, uh, I can work on each one individually. So what I'd like to do is replace these that are kind of skewed with something on either side. So I'm going to go to one on the one side and right click on it. And I'm going to make it a unique texture. And what that does is it pulls this panel, that texture, out from the rest of this. So it makes it a texture on its own. So unique texture. I sample that again. And I'll drop it over here. So that's not too bad. Again, here, maybe I'll go here. Unique texture, sample, and drop it here. And I think I'll drop it there. That's a little better, actually. This one is the edge of the overall texture. I, I guess I'm going to have to live with that. Here, uh, I think I'm going to create another unique texture. And you have to decide where you're going to pull that from. Something that'll work from here to here. So it needs to be higher on the right and lower on the left. Maybe this one. Make unique texture. Uh, go back, sample that. And we're going to drop it on here. It's not great, but it's better than it was. Nah, I don't like that. I don't particularly like what I did there either, to tell you the truth. I think I'll leave that alone. 
same over here. I will pick a unique texture or make a unique texture out of the panels on either side. Sample that. And drop that in. That's not too bad, actually. Do the same thing over here. Unique texture. Sample it. And drop it in here. That actually worked out pretty well. So now I've gotten rid of that skewed stuff. That really doesn't look too good. So what you see is I have the cylinder with the background texture all the way around. Right now the hidden geometry is still on, so I'm going to get rid of that. And you'll see that it's pretty continuous. That's the joint where this thing comes all the way around. So inevitably you're going to get something like that. You could maybe continue fussing with this and get it a little better. But that won't show up much. Okay, and I have my building, uh, building and site. Here's my original uh, that I'm going to move off to the side. Okay, so we essentially have it. I mean, this is the whole setup. What I'd like to do now is I've, I've got a bunch of scenes that I've pre-created here that you know I, I set up before I did all this. You would probably do this uh, right now as you go. Uh, I've created an axon which unfortunately has an old cylinder in it. I'm just going to get rid of that. Ignore that cylinder. Um, this is the one we want. We'll go to scene one, which again I preset. And actually, that looks pretty good. A lot of times you may have to adjust the height of the cylinder here behind beyond this, but we're good. I'm going to try scene eight, which obviously these are not in order, but I created them as I went along and deleted some, added some. You could rename these. Now, if you notice uh, here, two things have happened. One, I have trees that I've added as foreground, which helped to add depth to the overall scene. Uh, you probably want to add more. I've added some people, uh, a little more animation. I've also been, I've caught the top of the cylinder. So I'm going to want to change this scene a bit. Something like that. So I've eliminated the top of that cylinder. You can see it's there. And what I need to do here now is get this where I want, obviously. I can update this scene. So I right click on that scene and I update. I want to go back to 8 just to make sure that <clears throat> this flows well. It seems to. That seems to work. I haven't screwed things up here. Okay, so now what's happening is you've got your background, and as you move the model, the background changes with it. In other words, this is not static. People have been added. you got more foreground, added some trees at the uh, grass out here in front. And a little bit of a tweak right there that probably should be taken care of, which was the uh, space between the ground here and the background. So you can see this ground, that edge that we eliminated, you can see how clean that works. That doesn't put a line here. You know, SketchUp models have lines all over the place. There's no line here. So you tend to blend the foreground with the background. I'll update this scene once I get this back where I want it. Okay, that looks good. That piece over there is gone. So we'll update this. So you may have to fiddle with this a little bit when you uh, get this working, but you want to look and make sure all the scenes work. Okay, not bad. <clears throat> 
put some flowers in here. You can see we're approaching the lake. So it's important when you make your scenes that you create a realistic walkthrough. Little boathouse back here, which you know you couldn't see in the other scenes. These flowers are a little heavy duty. If you uh, want, you can go in there and hide those edges as well, or use use a different one. That's the way they should look. But you notice as I walk around the building, the background changes. This works very nicely. A few little places where I'd want to work on this, but I you know I'll go back at some point and clean these up. Similar situation with the unique texture. You can come in here and carve this out, change it. Now you saw that show up. That wasn't so good. I'm going to go backwards here and just check and see if I fixed that at all. Not really. I'm going to tilt this up this way. Go ahead and update this scene. Go back. And forward again. <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is make sure that that white space doesn't show up again. It looks like we're pretty good. I'm mean, going to ignore that. You know you have to fix that again. Uh, maybe I'll go back. So I'm going to want to tilt this up a little bit. Maybe down a little bit. Try that again. I'm just going to assume it's going to work. I don't want to have this video go on forever. Uh, scene 6. Again, you can see that's a problem there. We can fix that. I may even have to, have to add another scene in between these two to get rid of that, which is no problem. Okay, so there we have it. I'd probably work on that a little bit more. I'll go back to the exonometric view, which shows you the whole setup here. That's what you want to end up with. This is the deal. Now, if you notice from the side, I, because I painted the outside translucent, I can see through here. But on the inside, it's solid. So SketchUp has two faces and let you get away with this. I'm going to go ahead and run the animation. So you can see this in its totality. Now, I'm doing this really quick uh, to give you the idea. But you can see that the, this works. You're, you're going to have to uh, tweak this quite a bit more than I am here at the moment. But you can see how the background changes and works well with the building. And you're not getting the static thing. You're getting different parts and pieces of the background showing up. I'll just let it run. Creating your scene so you get a nice walkthrough is very important in these kind of situations, actually in any animation. You're going to have to spend a lot of time working out scenes and how they work like that. I have to get rid of that. But this isn't bad. I've made a few adjustment, adjustments that you've seen before. And we'll go back to the beginning. Let it get to that. That's where we started. I'll let it get to this axon and stop. So that's our setup. And that's about it. I mean, it's not really that complicated. You could maybe change the shape of the ground here a little bit to cover some of this white. Or even put a little bit more, you know, uh, sight in there. But that's about it. Um, 
I appreciate your watching. If you have any uh, comments or questions, please go ahead and put them up on the YouTube page, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.